You know, I'm sure that many of you enjoy watching a good mystery movie or reading a good mystery novel every now and then. And we all know someone who just loves to watch TV shows like Dateline 2020 or Unsolved Mysteries. They'll watch these shows with their full attention, sitting on the edge of their seat, just waiting to see how it's all going to end. You know, waiting for the great mystery to be revealed at the end. And people just love good mysteries. And in our message today titled, A Mystery Revealed in Heaven, you'll see a threefold mystery unfolding in heaven. But before we move on to our text, please bow with me in prayer. Gracious Lord, our Father, we come to you in the holy and in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that at the conclusion of this message in Ephesians chapter 3, that as children of God, we will have a better understanding of the mystery of your church that you have revealed in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture for today's message is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise, to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Amen. A mystery revealed in heaven. Look at this. In the beginning, there was only the Godhead, being God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, being three distinct persons, but with the substance of one. And then next you have God creating the heavens, the angelic host, the earth, and all of his other creations. And lastly, on the sixth day, God created man. And then we all know, of course, that on the seventh day that God rested. And man had a special relationship with God in the garden up until he disobeyed God and was kicked out of the garden, fell out of fellowship with God. And for man, things just kept going downhill from generation to generation. And so God eventually cut off his communication with man for 400 years. You know, it was during that time that man did what he thought was right in his own eyes. And you can just imagine what kind of mess that was. Now, just imagine heavenly beings looking down and seeing all of the horrible things that man has done since creation. And one would have to think that they couldn't help but to wonder what on earth was going on. So in today's message, we're going to take a look at how God unfolded his mystery for man through his son, Jesus Christ, to these heavenly beings. As I discuss God's threefold mystery in our text, which is first, what God is doing in the church. Second, God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus. And third, the believer's access to God. Now verse 10 in our, of our text says, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the wisdom of God. And this leads us to the first of God's mysteries, which is what God is doing in the church. When we take a closer look at this verse, we see that God's purpose was to use the church to reveal his wisdom to all the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. In other words, the heavenly realm, which encompass spiritual beings, both angelic and demonic. And you do know that the heavenly realm is just as real as the earthly realm. And since God's purpose was to use the church to reveal his wisdom to the heavens, the question to ask is, what wisdom does God want the church to reveal? The answer to this question is found in verse 6 in this chapter. So, if you look back at verse 6, you will see that the mystery to be revealed is that both Jews and Gentiles who believe the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ are now children of God, being one body in Christ who equally share in the rich promises of God. 
And this means that both the Jew and the Gentile believers are part of the same body and that they both are beneficiaries of the promised blessings of God because they are believers in Christ. So the first mystery that God revealed to all the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realm was that his mysterious plan of salvation was now not only for the Jews, but also for Gentiles. And that's what God is doing in the church. He is expanding the body of Christ. And now not only was this mystery of redemption about the Jew and Gentile now being one body, being preached by the apostles to a visible audience on earth. In our text, we see how this mystery is now also being proclaimed to an invisible audience of angelic hosts in heaven. And the news that God's eternal purpose for man was to create a new body of people consisting of both Jews and Gentiles who would love both him and each other profoundly affected the heavenly beings. It caused them to stand in utter amazement. You see, the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, they were totally unaware of God's plan. They were caught off guard of God's plan for the church. They knew about his plan of redemption for the Jews, but they were totally unaware of the fact that his plan had now been expanded to include Gentiles. So in verse 10 of our text, God is educating the angelic being with his new revelation and plan for the church. This is part one of his threefold mystery revealed in heaven. What God is doing in the church was hidden from the heavenly being. And now God is using the church to reveal his plan of redemption for mankind. God's wisdom is now becoming known even among angels of the spiritual realm as a result of what is taking place through the church. It's through the church that God shows his many-sided wisdom to these rulers and authorities in heaven. And as he revealed his plan to them, he letting them know that his plan from the very beginning of time was to bring salvation to every man, even though every man would not accept his son as their savior. But it won't be because they were not given the opportunity. When we study verse 10 of this passage of scripture, we see that the church is the means through which God has chosen to do his work right here on earth. And even though Jesus is the head, the church is the body of Christ here on earth. So it is the church's role to complete the work that Christ began while here on earth in his physical body. So in essence, the church is God's messenger on earth to spread the gospel of Christ and the church is the custodian or the keeper of the truth. The church is important. We need to be active participants in it. We are to encourage those who don't have a local church home and to find a place where they can worship and serve the Lord. And I've heard it say that the church is the only society on earth that exists for the benefit of its non-members. The church then must be a church in mission, one continually going forward to pass on the faith. Because there's so much work to be done for the Lord. The church should not become a hangout place for loafers. We all have work that we can be doing for the Lord. Look at this. There are four main bones in every church. I don't care how you look at it. There are four of them. First, there are the wishbones. You know, that's that group of people. They are just wishing somebody else would do something about the problem. And then you have the jawbone. And those are the ones who, they just do all of the talking, but they do very little else. Then you have the knuckle bone. And those are the ones who knock everything that the church try to do. And then you have the backbone. Those are the ones who carry the brunt of the load and do most of the work. And I don't care how large of a congregation that you have. When you compare the workers to the how many is, is at that local church, you only have a small amount of workers. It looked like in every congregation. And I don't know what it is, but it just looked like the way it is. Look like every congregation, I, it doesn't matter about the size. Look like they'll have a large wishbone. The church got a large jawbone. Church have a large knuckle bone. 
But look like in every church, there's a small backbone. And you know those who are carrying the brunt of the load, the ones who are doing most of the work. But let me tell you this, there are also some benefits of being active in a local church. And let's look at a few of them. First, we'll live longer. One study showed that attending church increased the lifespan for Caucasian by an average of seven years and potentially 14 years for African Americans. The more people go to church, less likely they are to die sooner. And that's a good reason to go right there. Less likely they are to die sooner than those who don't go to church. Next, we'll live better. Christian lifestyle encourages healthy habits and attitudes and as we strive to be good stewards of our bodies. And one study found that church membership decreased stress. That's another good reason to go because we ought to forgive and release that bitterness that ruins our physical body. Lastly, another benefit of being active in a local church is that we are land safely. Christians look forward to the future. We believe that as God once sent his son to rescue dying humanity, he will again send him to draw his own to himself. I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. So, as you can see, God's plan from the very beginning of time was to bring salvation to both the Jews and the Gentiles. And that is what God is doing in the church. Just think about it. It's amazing. Find out that even God's holy angels, as well as Satan and the fallen angels, are observed and with great interest the unfolding of God's great plan of salvation here on earth. Whether you know it or not, they are looking on. Just because you don't see them, don't mean they're not looking. Look, they are as closely, they are closely observing and learning about God, his nature and his purposes through the activity of the church. So, in essence, the church is serving in the role of an instructor for the angels and a unified faithful church. One more reminder to Satan of his defeat by Jesus Christ. Now, our text continues with verse 11 saying, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is in this verse that we see the second mystery that God revealed in the heaven, which was God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus. Our second mystery that God revealed in heaven, which was God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus. God's plans which centered in the church a part of his eternal purpose. And God made his plans for redemption before time began. So he was not surprised by Lucifer's fall or Adam's sin. Did nothing catch God, God, God off, uh, nothing caught him by surprise. God in his omniscient wisdom foresaw these tragic events and more. So God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus was the answer for man's sin problem. You know, since the beginning of time, man's behavior has been in a constant downward spiral. And today, prejudice, bitterness, hatred, hurt, anger, envy, strife, and divisiveness, they're all now part of our daily life. That's unfortunate, but that's the way that it is. Division in all of its various forms is one of the greatest problems confronting our world. So God's eternal purpose has been to create a new body of people, both Jews and Gentiles, a people who will love him and each other. And this is the great mystery of his eternal purpose in Christ Jesus. Verse 11, it lets us know that God's eternal plan was carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, remember that the principalities and powers in heaven were still looking down at what was going on with mankind here on earth and the evilness of his heart. They're still looking. So, upon hearing the mystery now being revealed in heaven about how God's plan of salvation for the church was accomplished through his son, Jesus Christ, the heavenly being once again stood in order amazement. But God saved us by grace. 
that is freely given. We did not have to work one hour older for salvation. We did not have to pay a cent nor do a single thing for salvation. And I have, I've heard it said this way. God is a great paymaster, but he's not going to let you work for your salvation. So no, sir, that's free. But here's what God wants you to do. He wants you to work while it's day. Because when night coming, no man can work. Look, God himself saved us through his son, Jesus Christ. Second Timothy chapter one, verse nine tells us that who had saved us, called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus delivered us from death. Think about it. We should never die spiritually when our time comes at the last moment in an instant of time, in a split second. God will transport us from this world to his presence. You know, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. We are saved from ever having to taste death. And that's because Jesus has tasted death for every man. The gospel of salvation accomplished through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is God's plan. And the mystery of Christ is that in his death on the cross, purchased not just eternal life for individuals who trust him, but he purchased and formed a new people of God. Church composed of Jews and Gentiles who are now both heirs of God's promise and beneficiaries of God's grace. And the thing to know is that God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus, the only plan whereby men may be saved. So if you miss this plan, then you will miss salvation. Now, as we look back over at what we've discussed up to this point, we saw that God has revealed two mysteries in heaven. The first being what God is doing in the church. How now salvation is available to both the Jews and the Gentiles. And second, that God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus was his redemptive work on the cross. Now our final verse 12 states, whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. And this leads us to the third and final mystery that God revealed in heaven, which was the believer's access to God. This verse lets us know that because of Jesus Christ and our faith in him, that all believers in Christ can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. You know, here in this mystery being revealed in heaven, the principalities and powers in heaven, they were in utter amazement at the believer's access into God's presence. Have you ever had a friend knew a very famous or distinguished person. And you would never have had any right to enter into that person's presence. But in your friend's company, you had the right of entry and were able to meet and converse with this distinguished person. This is exactly what Jesus does for us with the Almighty God. In the presence of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, there's an open door into God's very throne room. And Christ brings us access to God. Jesus Christ is the one who throws open the doors into God's presence. He is the one who presents us to God, the sovereign majesty of the universe. And the revelation of this mystery, that access to God is granted to all believers by faith in Christ, brought total amazement to the heavenly being. But all throughout the Bible, God tells us that we as believers have access to him through Jesus Christ. For instance, John chapter 10, verse 9 8, Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 reads, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And finally in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18 says, For through him we both have 
access by one spirit unto the Father. So the Bible makes it clear that we have access to God the Father through our faith in his son, Jesus Christ. God has done marvelous things for the believer. And unlike the heavenly being, we should not be caught off God or be amazed at all what God has done for the church. As believers, we should know what God is doing in the church simply because Jesus taught us God's plan of salvation. And we should know that God had an eternal purpose in Christ Jesus because it is through our acceptance of him that we are saved. And we should know that as believers, we have access into God's presence because God's word tells us that he has given us access to come boldly before him. God revealed his final mystery to the heavenly beings that that plan was that each and every believer in Christ now had the glorious privilege of approaching God through the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter who they are or what they might have done. There are no longer any barriers to present to, to prevent us from coming to God and being adopted by God as heir of God with other believers. And that's because Jesus broke the barrier. Now in closing, please know that God's purpose for believers in Christ involves much more just life here on earth. And God has an eternal purpose for believers which he revealed to the heavenly beings by telling them, what God is doing in the church. First, the three mysteries that God revealed to the heavenly being was about the church and how both Jews and Gentiles who believed the good news of the gospel of Christ were being bound together in unity into one new body of believers who together will inherit the promises of God. Second, God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus before the world was made. God knew Satan would fall and man would follow him in sin. So he already had prepared a counter strategy, a master plan for man's redemption from sin. So the second mystery revealed to the heavenly being was that the, re that the redemption plan for man's sin was fulfilled in God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus because Christ's incarnation, because through Christ's incarnation, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Man's salvation was secured in Christ Jesus. Third, the believer's access to God. As believers in Christ, we have every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, including the third mystery that was revealed in heaven, which was that we now have access to God because of Jesus' death on Calvary cross. Our believe now have direct access to the throne of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And oh, what a privilege it is to be able to access the very throne of God directly in the name of Jesus. Now, that the threefold mysteries of God have been revealed in heaven. The church now has an obligation to demonstrate the wisdom of God, mysterious plan to the world by being the church of God that Christ died to create. And we just need to be the church that God has called us out to be. And if you want to be in this unified church of God, one day spend an eternity with our Lord and God the Father in heaven, why don't you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior today? Recognize that God has done all of the mysterious work that he revealed in heaven. Just so that you, just so that you could be saved. A mysterious, a mystery revealed in heaven. Please bow with me as we pray. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for revealing to us a mystery revealed in heaven about your church. And Father, we thank you for paving the way for eternal life for all believers. And we know it was because of your mercy and grace and the substitutionary death of your darling son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you for that. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have a prayer request, I'd like to invite the Lord into your life. 
Or if you have any comments, please send me a Facebook message or use the contact us option available on our website at pnbcfellowship.org. You can also contact me with your question on today's message. To give your tithes, offering, and donation, please visit pnbcfellowship.org. Click the Give button on the top right of the page and follow the instructions from there. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Thanks again for tuning in. And remember that a mystery revealed in heaven called the heavenly beings to be in stark amazement as they learn what God is doing in the church to create a new unified body of believers and how God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus was man's redemption plan for sin and that the believer's access to God is now made available through faith in Christ Jesus. Now, I look forward to you viewing our live feed on next Sunday at 11 a.m. here at the pastor's desk or our live feed on YouTube at PMBC in space in Fed Fellowship or seeing you in person for Sunday morning worship on site. Providence Missionary Baptist Church, Montalva, Texas, being in accordance with the CDC guideline. Until then, I want you to take care and may God bless you.